Yes. Yes. Um, euthanasia is the act of death, either painlessly or allowing to die, by withholding extreme medical measures, a person or animal suffering from an incurable disease, especially a pain one, painful one, or just a condition. In certain cancer patients, pain is a big factor in their body. These patients' pain is described as commonly episodic and excruciating, aggravated by the moment. In Greek, euthanasia means good death. My, my major claim is euthanasia has advantages for terminally ill and for the ones with incurable conditions. My first point is euthanasia relieves unbearable pain and provides options. It's, first of all, it's painless because the authorized physician just provides a lethal injection and that's basically the whole process of putting somebody to death. Other people wonder if there's other alternatives. Hospice care and palliative care are suggested by physicians. Hospice care provides pain, symptom management, and range of psychological services and spiritual support to patients and their families through the duration of slight limited illness. But it doesn't relieve the pain, it just means that they're going to end up dying with pain in the end. Palliative care, goal, the goal of palliative care is to relieve pain, symptoms, and stress or really serious illness, but that's not always the case. They just suffer to the end. The, pa the other patient's options are told out to them by their physicians. They're right. They can refuse treatment even if you would die without it, refuse any form of nutrition and hydration, refuse cardiopulmonary resuscitation, ask a doctor to assist in ending his or her life, and requesting, requesting terminal sedation. Euthanasia also provides better quality of life for the person. How bad the quality of life is that it would be a positive outcome for them to die. In, study, in a study of hospice nurses, it was reported that among patients who had received prescriptions for lethal medications from a physician, the most important reasons cited for wanting assistance with the suicide were a desire to control circumstances of death, a desire to die at home, they believed that continuing to live was pointless and they were ready to die. Speedy termination of physical and emotional suffering, as stated in the book, many severely compromised individuals in their depression, loneliness, loss of normal life, and despair have asked their physicians to assist them in dying. The per another point is that the person would die with dignity. That's another positive outcome. Most of the people feel empowerment over the ter terminal or incurable disease. Oregon's dead with dignity law, which Oregon is one of the few, few states in the U.S. that allows euthanasia. Most of the people requested and their families surveyed said that few feel that patients feel empowerment over the ter terminal or incurable conditions. Fifty-seven of 50% of patients requesting a lethal prescription cited a loss of independence as an important reason in their patient's decision. 55% cited poor quality of life, 50% cited a readiness to die, and 53% cited a desire to control circumstances of death. The Department of Human Services in Oregon also found similar, similar results with losing of autonomy, less able to inject in activities making life enjoyable, and loss of dignity cited as a primary end of life concern.
right, uh, Susanna is our first experiment in this. Nobody seems to like this very much, but uh, it's something that I think makes a lot more sense. I'm going to make my comments orally for the, pre for the presentation. I let the camera keep rolling so they'll be on the video when you watch it later on. Please do so because you'll hear good things too. Nobody ever remembers the good stuff that I say. All they hear is I'm bagging on them and I'm not, okay? Uh, I thought that you start off pretty well. You had a nice uh, use of the definition for your attention device. You did clearly state what the proposition is, although the second part of the proposition has two sections to it. And the second section is completely unnecessary because it basically repeats what came before it. So you want to get rid of that. You don't really set up what the secondary points are going to be. You want to give us a better road map of what the structure of the speech is going to be. But you did do a pretty good job signposting the secondary points as you got to those main issues. I thought on the first point where you're suggesting that the alternatives to euthanasia are not very effective, you outlined what the alternatives are, but you had very conclusionary statements. I didn't hear any evidence about the inability of palliative care to be successful or what the circumstances were that people live in in uh, hospice care or why they don't have the same benefits that somebody who has uh, access to euthanasia would have in, in the sense of control and dignity and all those kinds of things. So I think you need uh, better support on that particular point. You made a very clear transition to the second point where you're talking about what the benefits, uh, what the need for uh, euthanasia is, and this is where you had a lot more data and supporting information. You had a good quote about the nurses uh, s survey talking about the request from uh, patients. You had good statistical information from Oregon talking about the reasons why uh, they need this. I think you needed to develop that point that says that uh, access to euthanasia has a, a substantial benefit on whatever life they have left and make that a key part of the argument as well as because because that's where most of your evidence really supports. There's not much about the pain and suffering and how this is really going to end it at that particular point. Presentation issues, you do have your hands buried deep in your pockets, you look down a lot, but your voice projects nicely and it moved along. It's a little short, but you kind of stopped abruptly and I think we needed a little bit more of a summary at the end of the speech and a concluding statement because it just seemed like you ran out and, you know, like, boom, and it just sort of dropped off. All right, but thank you for getting us started. I know it's always tough being the first person. <laughs>